Bateau's great play. Great shot from Nicholas Bateau. That's how to come out of the timeout. Hit a three from the corner. France's first score of this second half. And I guess in this situation, you're trailing by 22 points. You just kind of want to chip away, but it's got to come from the defensive end. And they've got the foul trouble as well. They've already lost Mahimi to five fouls, and it's early in the second half. Tricoglu over to Onai. Shakes Decolo off, and Trior with the rebound. Decolo crosses midcourt to Diaw. Looks across to Decolo again. Nando. And ball goes out of bounds and off of France. So even when it seems like the pressure isn't that great, the French turn the ball over. Here's another look at it. Yeah, it goes right off the hands, I believe, of Pietrus. Yeah, he beat his own by passing the ball around, finding the holes in it. France did that then, but couldn't hang on to it. And that's 13 turnovers for France. And they can ill afford to do that when that scoreline says what it does right now. Turkoglu. Oh, he drains it. Gosh, the Turks are really shooting the ball well. They are shooting 61% for the game right now. That includes 6 of 12 from long range. And I don't remember Turkoglu missing a shot yet. Trior oh. turns it over again, number 14. And Elanine, an unsportsmanlike foul, called against France. And, you know, yesterday we saw two games that were absolute nail biters. Croatia and Serbia, Serbia winning it by one, and Greece and Spain. And tonight, having seen uh, Australia just get pummeled by Slovenia, we're seeing a great Turkish team. We certainly are. There. <laughs> well, we've been asking for the last 10 days or so who are the favourites for this tournament. And home advantage means an awful lot in this. And it's not just that, though. They are a very good team as well. I think they'd be good on the road. I think what you have to remember, this Turkey team last year at the Eurobasket, no team was playing better until they got to late uh, in the qualifying round and they took on Slovenia and lost a close game. And then they lost one more game to, to Greece, a close game, and they were out of medal contention. So it can go south very quickly. But right now this Turkey team looks really strong. And the turnovers show how hard that defense is playing from Turkey. Yeah, very interesting spectators in this second game tonight will be the team that won the first game, Slovenia, because that's who Turkey are playing next. Oh, and they give Asik a chance to, to land, so no charge calls. Went up to catch the pass. Trior stepped in, tried to draw the charge, but it's 58-31 in favor of Turkey. Now Trior backs up Asik. Batum for three. Good. Tun -tun Cherry, he's hurt. And this is this is not good for Turkey. They're going to call uh, now that does time look, out. That does not look pretty at all. Well, I'm hoping that he's okay. I mean, you can't imagine as well as he's played tonight, as well as Turkey have played tonight, from a defensive standpoint, nobody's been better than Tuncheri. He's got three steals. Yeah, some very worried-looking Turks out there calling for the stretcher. That Matt well, it doesn't look good at all for Tuncheri. It was an accidental collision. Both players went over. Hopefully he's going to shake it off. I'd be surprised if we saw him again tonight. No, they're going to get some ice on that pretty quickly. So will it be Ender Arslan or is it going to be, yes, it will be Arslan that's going to come in for Tuncheri. Well, Tuncheri's trying to keep him moving and they're going to get him raised straight to the treatment room. No, end of the bench, get it up in the air. The hopes of a nation. Looking at this Turkish national team, what an awesome thing it would be if they could win a gold medal. They've got a long way to go. But what we're seeing right now suggests to everyone that they are one of the contenders. Turkoglu. Traor comes out on him. Turkoglu again for three. And then Batum can't keep Asik off the glass. Asik goes up and scores! is a killer. The first shot I think that Turkoglu's missed, but Turkey got the rebound and converted. And then Turkoglu, a foot violation at the, the other end. Again, that's great defense. Deny the pass. Well, Yanni 
Bacolo inbounds it. Just past the midpoint here of the third quarter. And Ali Traor goes up and scores for France. They're back to a 24-point deficit. And Cole issuing instructions. Defensive instructions. Trying to squeeze. Trying to make the Turkish, Turkish work hard. Sagging. Bacolo. Alpatrov extends. Turkoglu looking up at the shot clock. Four on the shot clock. He's going to take it. He's taking a three. No good. Can you say air ball? And that one turns over to France. Well, the amazing thing about that uh, defensive sequence in France, I don't honestly believe they knew what they were playing then. They kept switching halfway through that offense. One minute it was a zone, and the next minute it was all over the place, but they got the air ball. Piccolo, bounce pass to Pietras at the line. And Gonlam kicks it. They reset the shot clock. That's almost a man in shock. Vincent Collet. He's probably still in shock from what happened the other night against New Zealand when France just didn't come to play and they paid the price. Getting beat by 12 points to the Tall Blacks, which threw him into this game against Turkey. Dial for three. Good. Wasn't bothered by the hand of Gunlock. Got a lot of poise about him, Boris Dior. Very cool customer. Great skills. Somewhat languid in appearance, but uh, boy, can he play. He's got 10 points now as Arslan drives in. Over to Onan, who comes in, and nobody from France met Onan in the lane as he did his Juan Carlos Navarro imitation. And the pass from Pietrus, warning the unsportsmanlike call, but he's not going to get it. Yeah, a little hold on the cuts. Karim Gunlam with the foul. Here's another look at that. No, no unsportsmanlike foul. He did have his hand on him in the back. I think the refs were right on that one. Deal. New shot clock. Three minutes to go here in the third quarter. Out to Bacolo. How many kicks? I think this is really, I think they must lead the world in kicks. I mean, and that is a testament to how good that defense is. It is. Do not let the ball go inside. Use whatever part of your anatomy is available. Well, don't use all of it, but like the nose, for example. Pietras, here it goes over to Bacolo. Oh, a tough shot from Yannick Bacolo, but he does draw the foul. Monica signals two shots at the free throw line in Asik. And this quarter seems to have flown by 2.46 to go. And it's been more or less all Turkey. Now, not to suggest that France aren't going to come back, but just looking down the road, if Turkey were to face, say, the United States, and the United States didn't bring a lot of big guys over, you can see how they could struggle against the likes of Asik, Gonlam, Turkoglu, as well as uh, Simi Eridan coming off the bench, Olga Suvas. I mean, it's, this team has, has looked very big tonight. I think most teams will struggle against this size, and I can imagine Argentina will, especially if uh, Fabrizio Roberto isn't uh, back to full fitness. That said, they're still getting out-rebounded tonight. Here's Ender Arslan, and offensive foul called on Ender Arslan. A uh, little elbow in the face, I think. Quite accidental, but uh, no malice, but he was a foul. And Cole calls the, calls the play. Who came in for country is going to sit down with his teammates because we've got a timeout on the floor. As we take one more look here, watch what happens when he comes up. Yeah. Uh, he yeah. he tried to brush him off. It wasn't the elbow, but he hit him with his hand. Come on, Ender. You know better than that. Timeout on the floor with 2:40 to go in the third quarter. Turkey lead it, 62-41.